six space tourists and one pilot will sit inside it comfortably and go all the way to the edge of space which is upper stratosphere we are targeting 35 to 30 to 35 kilometers altitude so the total journey is going to be around 6 hours the top view where you will see the spectacular and beautiful earth and the vastness of space uh, it's going to be for one hour experience so for one hour you can literally see the earth and space So it's been a pretty much almost seven years journey, which a lot of people might not be aware. So it started when uh, I was trying to evaluate what are the things that I should do next. So I had a bunch of four or five ideas and I thought, let's do something around space. This is seven years back I'm talking about. Like so there was no starter except one, I guess. And But somehow I thought that I can pull it off, right? So uh, it started with, let's do some sort of space ads. Can we have ads in space? or marketing activities in space. And uh, I researched a lot and I felt that, okay, uh, there's not much of thing happening in that direction properly. And uh, the internet was picking up and the consumers were also trying to get into the whole social media part. And I was very much aware how consumers sort of behave or what do, will it sell? So I was pretty much confident that, yeah, what I'm thinking will sell. I need to figure out how to do it technically and how to make it possible feasible. Uh, the model was also business model largely that even if I get just three, four clients, that's how I started. My thing will go really well. I'm like, I can get three, four clients from around the world. That's why, what I thought. So I began with that journey of, uh, of uh, reaching out and trying to figure out how we can do space ads. So I reached out to rocket companies. Can you imagine? Uh, they sent out a few quotations, which were like in millions of dollars. This is seven years back, right? And I'm like, okay, this is pretty costly, but still I know there are pretty crazy people around the world who would like to shell out that money to do some sort of space hacks. Maybe some brands or some individuals. There are a lot of possibilities that can be done. Uh, then I think, then over a period of time, I figured out that, okay, there's something called high altitude balloon or also called scientific balloon, which goes up to upper stratosphere and uh, which is su sufficient enough to see the earth behind it. So I'm like, okay, this is pretty much cost effective and... I, I can send those products, attach a camera, and we get get everything recorded, and it's, we can send ads and place a digital screen like what we did. So we already done two launches as such. One is uh, sending a custom digital screen and a diamond ring. So we just wanted to show what are the possibilities because if I tell someone and I don't show, no one is going to believe. Even right now, a lot of people don't believe. So that happened. Eventually, we did three launches. One failed. Two was successful. One was custom digital screen with a space ads display uh, which is there on a site also as a video and uh, a diamond ring uh, for various purposes that you can think of then over a period of time i thought okay uh, let's get into human thing which means we figured out how uh, we can have a indian female skydiver who can break the world record for the highest altitude jump so right now the world record is of felix baumgartner and alan ushta they are two people one was sponsored by red bull the felix baumgartner it was pretty much a very big event and it was a world record until 2018, I guess, or 20 uh, for the most concurrent number of viewers. So I thought, okay, I like doing such stuff. I would also personally like to do this jump. I like doing crazy stuff, uh, but they didn't work out well because it was very costly of, uh, affair. I reached out to a lot of brand sponsors, but they're like, it's pretty good, but it's a very costly affair. Overall, I mean, it's a new system. I'll just give you a brief uh, so that the audience and people know what we are working on also. So there's something called a high altitude balloon system. Uh, it's a very specially made balloon. It takes almost three months to just manufacture. It's not like hot air balloon. It's very different. Uh, it's proven because if you see the Felix Baumgartner jump, he went via that kind of system. So uh, it's very huge, almost the size of an airplane uh, filled with hydrogen helium. And attached to that would be a parachute and a spaceship or a space capsule, right? So it's going to be a spacious, luxurious, very comfortable spaceship and or space capsule, not like how your existing one. It's going to be very decent. There are a few reference images that I've shared on our site too. Uh, so six space tourists and one pilot will sit inside it comfortably and go all the way to the edge of space, which is upper stratosphere. We are targeting 35 to 30 to 35 kilometers altitude. So the total journey is going to be around six hours. The top view where you will see the spectacular and beautiful earth and the vastness of space, 
uh, it's going to be for one hour experience. So for one hour, you can literally see the earth and space. That's the experience we want to provide. Very comfortable ride, nothing like a high G-force experience. Uh, and anyone who is 18 plus years uh, and, uh, and not much afraid of height, it's pretty much easy to go. So this just requires one week of training or being with us to know all the nitty gritties. As you know, for space tourism market is big. Uh, people last year, SpaceX have flown people, uh, and even Jeff Bezos flew region, Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. People are paying millions of dollars, and they're all going up. And over a period of time, the cost will decrease. And uh, and uh, I think it's going to even like statistically, it's like increasing at thirty seven percent CAGR, which is pretty big. People are now trying to spend more on. Uh, on uh, all these adventures and uh, experiences rather than on material things. So there are a lot of reports and trends significant which shows in that direction. Definitely, there is, uh, uh, there, there is some sort of gas chemicals that get released, right? Uh, but it does have some of it, but it's not so drastic or significant right there are right now only few space tourists and launches happening right now but over a period of time it increased tremendously at the same time my observation is all the companies that are working including us our focus is to work on technologies and reduce and use more of the green energy wherever possible so i foresee that a lot of those things will change where we'll be using a lot of green energy but compared to like there are thousands of air flights airplanes flying every day the kind of pollution that they do, it's like pretty, pretty less in those comparison lines. Uh, I think it's pretty much safe as, as, as far as the systems are working really fine. Uh, if you see, there has been literally no instance of any damage to a human who has gone to space, including International Space Station, orbital, suborbital. Mm -hmm. People have literally come back fine, although there have been some instances where there has been some uh, some mishap because of technology. So I mean, from the point of view of space tourists, they are going for adventure, a great experience that they want to experience or uh, do witness. But indirectly, there are a lot of technological behind the scenes technological development and breakthroughs that happen indirectly, right? For example, when Neil Armstrong went to moon, definitely he just went to moon and landed and came back, right? If you see in that sense. But the, yeah. but the kind of technological development and the it took to just to do that great task and land someone on moon was breakthrough, right? And because of those kind of development which happened, there were so many different applications that came up indirectly, a lot of uh, improvement in terms of aerospace, data, uh, a lot of aerospace data, the technology side of it. So uh, I think for, same applies with space tourism. For example, in our case too, uh, while we're using all this system, balloon technology capsule, so we are making like support system, we are making space related components, right? We are using more, more of an advanced parachute system so that the safety is paramount. So we need to make sure that passengers come back safe. Uh, the balloon system, it's already been used, by the way, for this kind of uh, balloon thing, but more for scientific reasons. So even uh, NASA uses, has been using for decades. So they use for a lot of experiments, X-ray experiments, uh, other astronomical related experiments, pretty complex. In fact, a lot of people are not aware. So, uh, so you, for example, with the kind of thing that we are doing, we can definitely have remote sensing. We can, in fact, also launch small satellites because the lot of power uh, or the main thing that happens with rocket launch or launching a satellite is escaping the Earth's gravity. And we can reach with balloon up to 40 kilometers, right? So for till 40 kilometers, if we have that small sort of a thruster or booster and from by re and, and keeping a small satellite, uh, we can definitely launch a satellite from a booster which travels to 40 kilometers with the balloon and then from there it separates out. So a lot of mm -hmm. complexities get uh, reduced in that sense. So there are a lot of, I mean, indirect applications that comes, right? I'm sure even with uh, SpaceX, 
kind of thing or blue origin virgin galactic although they are sending tourists but they have taken decades of time or mm-hmm. uh, to build that up which means it involved so much of technology aerospace or design elements which were so new and it definitely is going to be a learning for a lot of people and bring more advancement in technology so it's not just about leisure definitely that's the core because that's how a business or can sustain and uh, and people exactly. can also have a great journey indirectly it brings a lot of technological innovations yeah so basically the end goal is technological revolution i wouldn't say it goes parallelly we need to also mm-hmm. make sure that space tourists are happy they are having a great time definitely. and indirectly obviously there are a lot of technological innovations mm-hmm. and possibilities that can unfold which is the way we are yeah. trying to do uniquely also by is having a unique fusion of indian culture and space travel now this is very new like what is this happening right okay. so what we realize is that ultimately for space tourism uh, it's about the space tourist experience they don't care much about like what is the technology i mean they want it to be safe but it's about that delighting them right mm-hmm. and how we can you utilize the indian culture parties at every touch point uh, it's about delighting them right so one is obviously they are going beyond earth seeing the that's pretty great right they'll mm-hmm. have a transformative experience it, it might be life changing but my observation is that uh, we can also have the ancient wisdom and uh, ancient science which can be included that means uh, prior to going up why don't you come to us for additional one week which sort of would be compulsory that's what i plan to and then we use yogic sciences meditative sciences and other uh, uh, indian culture part where they feel relaxed peaceful and connected to self before going up right because suddenly imagine i tell you okay let's go somewhere up you'll be like great but once you're more relaxed more happy more blissful and connected to self then you go up then it's going to be more profound and rich experience right mm-hmm.